there. Um, so, skipping on. So today, the title of my talk today is uh, Next of Skin, My Hopes We Rely On. And during my talk today, or tonight, um, I will focus primarily on my research in the ABC, which centers around bacteria, also known as microbes, that are found on our skin. So, um, did you know you acquire bacteria on our skin during birth? So from the moment you were born, you're coated with your mother's microbes. And the type of bacteria you get depends whether or not you were born via natural birth or C-section. During my talk, I will hope to show you how important our skin bacteria are, how much we rely on them, and how they really are our next of skin. So we've got a bit of a problem. One of the major challenges facing modern medicine today is a thing called antibiotic resistance. I know some of you here have heard of it, I'm not sure if everyone has. So what is antibiotic resistance? Antibiotic resistance is when antibiotics can no longer kill bacteria. This is because bacteria are actually quite smart and are constantly changing and adapting to avoid being killed by antibiotics. Um, if antibiotics can't cure, um, if, sorry, if antibiotics can't cure anti uh, bacterial infections, we become very vulnerable. So, has everyone here heard of MRSA? It's often mentioned on the news. It's a rapid superbug in hospitals here in Cork and all around the world. MRSA stands for methicillin resistant Staph aureus. So, Staph aureus is a type of bacteria associated with our skin and MRSA is a type of Staph aureus that is very resistant to treatment. And so, um, while resistant to treatment, we can't control it, it's a major problem. Sorry. So, on Valentine's Day in 1929, a scientist called Alexander Fleming first discovered the first antibiotic, penicillin, and it was on that day we were struck with Cupid's arrow and our love of antibiotics was born. Penicillin has saved millions of lives. It is used to treat ear, skin, and respiratory tract infections, to name but a few. Um, it is all our sorry now. Um, yeah. Uh, so, and it is still one of the most widely used antibiotics today. Antibiotics have saved countless of lives. However, as antibiotic resistant builds, the power of our antibiotics are fading. So how do you contribute to antibiotic resistance? When you get antibiotics, do you always finish out your prescription? Or do you, um, do you finish out, sorry, do I finish, or do you take antibiotics when you don't need them, like when you have the flu? Over prescription of antibiotics has directly led to bacteria becoming resistant to treatment. On top of this, new drugs are not being discovered quick enough because biopharma companies invest more money on drugs for lifelong conditions such as cholesterol tablets rather than on our much needed antibiotics for short term conditions like chest infections. So the blue line here on the graph shows the steep, deep increase of antibiotic resistance of the superbug MRSA since 1980, while the red line shows a steep decrease um, of the number of new antibiotics being discovered since then. So the problem is obvious. We need new antibiotics and we need them fast. So our skin is the largest organ in our body and it's our first line of defense against the outside world. There are trillions of bacteria on our skins and as keen as shiny as you all are here today, you are covered in a multitude of loads and loads of different kinds of bacteria. The bacteria on our skin are like a defense force guarding and protecting us from against invaders. So our skin bacteria are like a second skin or like a coat protecting us from infections and disease. If we are under threat, our skin bacteria can produce small proteins called bacteriocins, which are like natural antibiotics that kill bad bacteria. So these small proteins, as I said, are bacteriocins, which are like um, which are like antibiotics produced by our own bacteria to prevent attack by invaders, which are bad bacteria. Similar to Captain America here, they're like our superhero shields. So what I'm doing is looking for bacteria on our skins that kill harmful bacteria. 
I'm recruiting for the special branch of the Defence Force to help in our fight against antibiotic resistance. So now I want you to feel the palm of your hand. Now feel your face. There's a difference, isn't there? As a result of the different environments on our skin, many, our skin is home to many different bacteria. I recruited 20 fe uh, people in my study, males and females like you yourselves, to swap themselves on different seven different body parts. These body parts range in their belly buttons between their toes and the side of their nose. I gave them a cotton bud and I got them to wipe across the body part um, that is circled, the different body parts circled in red here. I then took the swab into the lab and I wiped it across a dish, a dish containing nutrients for like miracle growth for bacteria. I grew it up for two days and we can see here by all the dots that lots of different bacteria grew. When they were grown, I picked bacteria of different size, shapes and colour um, and tested to see if they could, could kill bad bacteria like MRSA. So, and I got the clear circle here. Now, why this clear circle may not look that impressive, I can tell you it really is. So, as you can see here, the dark shading on the outside of the circle is the MRSA growing, but on the inside of the circle, it's not growing. Why? Because the dot there in the center, here, Ken, is, actually, is after killing the MRSA. Our special branch defense force, the bacteria said, has killed it. So in my PhD, I have scanned over 90,000. Sorry, I've scanned over 90. Oh yeah. So I've scanned over 90,000 bacteria from the skin of 20 people, and um, and I've only only 36 of the 90,000 were found to produce a bacteria sin. So now I'm focusing on one particular bacteria sin producing bacteria. So we're going to call her Grace. So Grace is a good bacteria. We know she can kill MRSA, but now we need to know exactly how she does it. So we looked at her superhero power, the ability to make bacteria cells. So in the lab, I grew Grace up in liquid miracle grow to purify and identify the bacteria that she produces. I separate all the proteins on this complicated machine here and get their sizes shown by these red lines here at the bottom left. I then compare these red lines with red lines in a database it's a bit like a game of guess who. The red lines didn't match up for Grace, so it means I found a new bacteria sin. Exciting, eh? Maybe I'll call her saving Grace, what do you think? <laughs> so to round up today's talk, um, antibiotics still play a central part of modern medicine today. However, we are running out of them. We need alternatives. One such alternative can be found naturally on our skin. Our skin's bacteria protect us in many ways, and one such way is the production of Special Branch Defence Force bacteria sins that could be harnessed one day to treat bacterial infections and I hope my current work will contribute into our fight against antibiotic resistance. So I'm going to wrap it up there. I hope you learned loads about our skin bacteria, how important they are and how they really are our next to skin. And then, so probably two days in total, you can see it's only. So you grow it up and then you put other bacteria on top, right. and you can see if it can kill it or not. So it's like two days in total, yeah. 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 Uh, because, like, people living in different parts of the world, they probably also face different bacteria from the environment. Would you also say that, that let's say, people from different continents would also have different defense mechanisms, like different bacteria things? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, so, well, actually, I'm very fortunate working in Chagas. We have um, a wide um, a national, wide area of nationality, so I got a good few nationalities, different nationalities in this study. 
but, but you could also see that, like, that, depending on the background, they had a different set of bacteria depending on It depends. Like, it really depends even on the body area, more so between the, between the people, you know. Like, Staphylococcus bacteria were the most dominant that I found from the culturing method I worked on. So, um, yeah, not very different, no. No, not very different. Like, they looked pretty much the same. Like, some were a bit different depending on the area. Like, between the toes were kind of gross sometimes. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, too bad. Yeah. Yeah, bacteria is pretty similar to Grace is a Staphylococcus cactus. <laughs> Yeah. How many uh, treatments are there? Are there any treatments in these bacteria since? Uh, the only bacteria that has been FDA approved as of yet uh, is Nysen. Um, but Nysen is a really broad spectrum of bacteria since, so we're really trying to find more narrow spectrum. A lot of mine were broad spectrum antibiotics or bacteria since, but um, no, there's no narrow spectrum as of yet. Um, but they like there are being, there's a lot of work we've done on Thank you.